When I ask UX people who practice user research what is their biggest challenge, I often hear how hard it is to engage stakeholders with research. What are your thoughts on this topic? I think probably one of the most fundamental problems of dealing with the, with getting stakeholder buy-in with research is largely the term research. It, it connotes a certain um, academic exercise. So in many respects, it's tying what you're doing in research to how it's going to make a beneficial impact for the company. Sometimes that means just not using the term research. Sometimes it means using the research with immediate benefits for the company. All right. Uh-huh. Um, what would you recommend to in-house UX researchers who are always trying to identify opportunities for effective research if they want to better identify such opportunities? Yeah. In my experience, I think a lot of in-house UX researchers will look for explicitly stated research projects, and in my experience, those rarely exist. So you find a project that's got high visibility um, and will have a high impact even if there's not an explicit research focus. From that, whether it be just a usability test or a survey, you integrate specific research questions that you want to get answered, but at the same time, it benefits the company by, by answering this, their specific business need. So it's often not looking for research per se, but finding high profile, which gets the budget, which gets the priority, which gets the ears, which then leads to potentially other more explicit research budgets. What, what do you answer to stakeholders who tell you that five participants are not enough? I tell them they're right. Five participants is not enough if they want to detect problems that impact less than the majority of users or less specifically than 31% of users. Having a small number of users to test is only going to uncover the more obvious problems. If you want to detect problems that are much less frequent, you're going to need a larger and larger sample size. So if it's an early t- stage prototype development, having those uh, a few users will identify the obvious problems, and there's usually many of those to work on early on. UX researchers sometimes experience a tension between conducting research they were asked to do by their stakeholders, for example, a product manager, versus research they were not asked to do but think they should do. What are your thoughts on balancing this tension? Yeah, and my thoughts are just quite simply, it is a balance. It's obviously, you know, it's just generally good work advice to do what you're asked to do, but then at the same time, most people are not going to get mad if you suggest alternatives that you believe would um, improve. I mean, there's a certain insubordination that one has to balance uh, and not overstep the boundaries of what you're asked to do. But at the same time, if it's a method that your, your boss might not be aware of, um, suggesting that and providing that, especially if it doesn't add more time and you get those deliverables that you've been asked to complete done, then it's usually a win-win. Can you tell me a story about a difficult stakeholder who did not understand or respect UX research? I can't think of one on that one. <laughs> That's a good, that's one I'm going You don't to have to name names. No, I know. And I, and I, that was one I couldn't think of a good one. It's just been too long since I've had this situation right. where stakeholders are like, ah, I don't care about this stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, I couldn't think of a good All one. All right. Many UX practitioners are always looking for creative deliverables that engage their stakeholders with research findings. What are some deliverables you, find to be, you found to be working for you? You know, I find not cranking something out in a very long report is, is, is usually appreciated. It's often essentially essential that you have to document these, and especially large companies. But uh, visualizations of uh, numbers, whether it be in a two-block or a two-by-two two, uh, graph where you can show more impact and importance on these measures, this seems to be uh, resonate well with executives. Those, that's a good visualization, especially when you're dealing with numbers, as, as one example. A quick follow-up. You mentioned long reports. What is long? (laughs) Um, In my experience, a long report is probably anything more than about 10 or 15 pages. Unfortunately, in many big companies, there's about eight or nine pages of overhead in the report already. That's going to be document change control, tables of contents, title pages, spaces between title pages, giant footers and headers. (laughs) And so if you're forced to use that, it, it tends to make the reports extremely bloated. All right. Some UX research practitioners believe that they should only provide findings and never offer recommendations following UX studies. They let their teams figure out what they need to, uh, to, to do by themselves, uh, believing that this way these teams are more committed to act upon research. What are your thoughts on this approach? You know, I find this is similar to uh, keeping the editorial commentary out of the news reporting. It's a similar sort of balance. There are times when it's important that you strictly show these are the findings without my necessarily biased recommendation, and people should be aware of that. However, as we see with many television news programs, people want to know what your opinion is, and they want to hear your comment on it, and they will both pay for it and be interested in it. So I think providing both, even when it's not asked for, can be fine as long as it's explicit. So editorial stays away from the facts in many respects. 
last question. How can UX practitioners tell if their stakeholders are bought into research? I don't know. That's another one I didn't have a good answer for. <laughs> I could think of it. I think I'd think of a good pithy thing is to come up with that one for the video. All right. I think it's seven. I got seven out of nine, right? Yeah. Uh, do you want to add anything related to this topic? Uh, research. Um, um, no, I, I think I would just say that in my experience, even the most qualitative non-numeric aspect of user research can be very easily quantified just with simple counts, simple numbers that, that provides meaning that can be managed to others who are not quite sure about how to interpret the, the art and the craft of what we do. It's important, but there's a role, I believe, always for quantifying your output, and it makes everybody's job uh, easier. All right. Thank you.